All right. Sean, it's so nice to meet you yes, here. Yes, thank you. Yeah. yeah and and you. and you got the you got the pleasure or the limited pleasure. You have to talk talk me through your your exactly. nice product. Yeah. I, know, I get to show up the good stuff. Yeah. Yes, you. There you. Maybe maybe you're lost in this one. Maybe you're not so lucky. But uh, <laughs> so uh, before we get started, I mean, uh, I always like your colors and your identity and things like that. So is that. Is it important for for a company like yours to also have software that, where the user interface is just awesome and yes, exactly. So uh, one of the things about Chili is that it's very dynamic. Yeah. Right. It can be used in many different instances um, for creating smart artwork and also being able to create a user interface that works for your clients. Because sometimes you have clients who are doing extremely creative things. You know, they want like high level uh, technical, and you have other clients that just want to type in a name. Right. Yeah. 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 So um, actually, I have a good example of that, right? Mm -hmm. So, so, so this is how Chili looks uh, when you get into. Well, this, this is a demo portal. For That's Chile. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you can actually everyone can go to the spicy, the big spicy dot com and yeah. log in, and they can actually try it out themselves. And here you'll see a bunch of different documents, mm -hmm. um, and these documents show off different types of specialities when it comes to Chili. So I'm going to show you a very simple one, all right? Super. It's not super impressive, but it's very simple. Doesn't look like Kevin, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I know. Kevin uh, yeah. wants to look better. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so here we go. This is just a simple, you know, you fill in your name, your last name, right? And it updates live. Yeah, I can see that. In the editor. Yeah. So some solutions don't update live. We update live. It's a live document, all right? Now this is very simple, right? You control what the user can and cannot do. And you just do. got yourself a new job, right? I got myself a new job. I'm the CEO now. Oh, so. congratulations. I mean, <laughs> Thank that's you. cool. Um, but then when you'd press done and you, you get your PDF and you'd send it out to the printer or maybe you give the PDF to the client. Now that's cool, but what's even more cool is if you could actually tie this to a data source. Yeah. So this is the same document, yeah. except in this instance, there's a data source tied to it. And so you and can that have, data source can be in Excel or in database Excel, or CSV, a CM system or whatever. Yeah, or yeah. XML. APIs can be yeah, used. Yeah, you can to, use the API just to call it in there. Yeah. Um, and this data source here, so like you have different so names. Is this is this an Excel I can see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yep. So basically, you load in the Excel by click on the upload, upload file. file. Yep. And then you get like a preview of it here. Correct. And you have like the first rows is like the exactly. headers. And then when I click a row, it's going to update the content in the document over here. That's cool. So and what's even more awesome is you see it change the color because so Chili you. Chili supports what we call alternative layouts. It allows you to design one template and then use that in multiple different styles. That's cool. Right? One template, multiple uses. So that means basically, let, let's say that, let's, let's take it from an application's perspective. It means that if you are, let's say, let's, let's say that you're a printing company and you yep. want to invest in this one, you can actually have like uh, every, every little thing that your customer does is yep. related to what yep. company or what division exactly. or whatever. Yeah. So in this case, we're actually changing based on the name that you click. And then when you would do a PDF output, you would get all these rows in your PDF, uh, each page, and it'd all be you know different designs based on the names. But like what you were talking about for a printing company, they might be interested in something like kidding, mm -hmm. where they could have uh, one size that then fits all. So for example, here we go, we have this kind of banner. Mm -hmm. And this banner here is going to have different sizes. So I can go select format, mm -hmm. and I can do it for a web, I can do it for A4. Um, you could think how this would be useful in the sense of like if you have one product, like you said, then you can have like a signage, you could have the, the pamphlets, you could have the business cards, all built in one template. You design so, that. Uh, so let's say that you are a supplier to uh, a retail shop yep. where you have like different sizes of, of needs, then you can actually make one template that have all the different sizes Correct. and when you order, then it... Uh, exactly. Yeah, you can have the client order them all or maybe they pick and choose like they do here. Mm. Now, so... Chile is very diverse in those two areas. Um, some of the new features we have in Chile, which will be interesting for print, is we actually included uh, step runs. So what that is, it's like in up, um, and you take instead of just printing on one page, you take that multi-page document and you print it on like a spread or in position. Yeah, so it's like an in position thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. So if I come here, I'll show you an example. This is a, a newsletter that was created in Chile. And what I'm going to show you here is I'm going to show you the full interface. So get ready. This is going to have everything in it. So I should cry now or should I? Oh, look at that. Look I'm, at that. I'm, I'm crying of pleasure <laughs> because this looks so cool. Yeah. Yeah. You can see all the tools we have here. Yeah. Now, this is more for the template designers, not yeah. for the end users. Yeah. yeah. Um, very similar to a lot of uh, other design products in that there's all these tools. You can go and be very specific on how you want the frame, where you want the things to be positioned. In this instance here, we have four pages. Right? That was simple, wasn't it? That was simple. Okay. What we're going to do here is we're going to do a PDF export, yep. and we have this whole step run. So I go ahead and decide it's going to be by three columns, by three rows. And now when I go to do the output, 
come over here. We'll go ahead and choose our output as step. Click generate. And that's gonna produce the PDF. It's gonna take a little bit. It's gonna go through all the pages and create into one PDF. Uh, we have our new PDF engine, which was recent in the summer. And now it's gonna be full default in our new 5.7 that's coming out. And that new PDF engine is gonna increase the speed of variable data printing. So we're actually extremely competitive in that variable data printing field. Now, uh, there we go, PDF is done. And we take a look and you'll see that it's stepped. That's it's nice. It's nice and simple, easy to do, not that long. And, and I'm sorry that I asked you about the printing companies because I think that one of the things that are it's really cool about Chile is that you're not depending on no, any exactly. output device or right, anything. Right, yeah. yeah, so yeah. Um, a lot of times we have clients who use this for web format. They yeah. want to make banners, that kind of stuff. But also, it tends to be used a lot for branding. For example, this spicy beer, this is a fake brand that we have. Um, you're kidding. <laughs> well, we actually we actually do make the beer. You can actually get it if you come to I remember, Spicy Talks. I remember, yeah, I am coming to Spicy Talks, but <clears throat> I also remember from Label Expo that you serve personalized spicy beers. Yeah, exactly, uh, yeah, exactly, yeah. 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 So you can also do branding things. So typically brands like to use our product because you can control with rules what type of uh, colors they can use, what type of fonts they can use, the logos they can choose. So just to understand it, in this incident, you, you had an output like a PDF, but would yeah. you all be able to output like uh, HTML5 yeah. or whatever? You can output to images. Yeah. Uh, we have HTML output. Um, you can output to, well, I mean, there's just, there's a, pretty much anything that you use. Image and PDFs are the big yeah, ones, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can also output back to InDesign. Yeah. So if you made your thing in InDesign oh, and you want to cool. output it out. Okay, so you, can you start your template from InDesign as yep. well? Yep, and you can also start your template from Illustrator. So here I made this template in Illustrator, and um, we have a converter for both InDesign and Illustrator, which allows you to convert that template into Chili. And then what's really cool is you can convert it back once you've made the changes. Fantastic. So you got that kind of workflow that works for yeah, designers. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, because I mean, I think it, with all respect to designers, a lot of them are a little bit maybe, con I wouldn't say conservative, but conservative. Yeah, they're used to the tools. Yeah, that's what, I'm, what I want to say is basically if you're used to work with specific tools, it's always nice that you can utilize them in your, yeah. in your further workflow. Right. Right? And then what you would typically do here is you would design the template and then you would output it to Chile. And then in Chile, you're going to add all the logic. So for example, you see this template here, it's missing the, um, like the nutrition facts. Yeah. So what I did is I uh, converted the chili, yeah. and I think I have it open right here. Yep, I do. Yeah. And you see in here I put in yeah. all these variables. And so now what I can do is the client could come in here and actually go to the variables tab. And you notice the frame, the, the UI has changed again, yeah. because we can do that. We yeah. have so the UI in. can change according to based what role you have. Yeah, yeah. based yeah. on the yeah. role. Yeah. So here I can uh, change, so for example, 190 calories, that's kind of a lot. Let's change it to 10 calories. I think people will like that better. It's much healthier now, right? It's a better beer, basically. <laughs> exactly. Can you increase the alcohol percentage as well? <laughs> <laughs> so this, uh, this whole process um, allows you to, you add all that logic in here. You can do things like even change the design. So here I have like different designs based on the product. So you can see the font color changes when I do that. Um, we can change it to wasabi flavored. <laughs> you got a blue That's there. a kind of strange beer, isn't it? I mean. <laughs> um, so, some other features we added that is kind of new to Chile, and I think especially in the print field they'll be super excited about this, is we added two new color types. So Chile has always supported, um, let's go down here a bit, new color. Chile has always supported CMYK, RGB, lab, and spot, and gradient. But the two new color types we added were registration and mixed. Registration is not super exciting, it's just black. It's 100% everything, but uh, it's there. <laughs> I more, guess you need it, but you yeah, do like you do, registrations yeah. and things like that. Exactly. Course, yeah. What's more exciting is mixed, because mm -hmm. mixed allows you to choose uh, between CMYK and spot colors. Oh, really? And you mix it together. Ah, and get so you can make an output where you have a mixture of a spot. specific colors. Yep. It allows for specific output, and uh, what happens is, so let's say I choose these two here, and we'll go ahead and give it a little, little bit of color, and then once I add the spot, I can choose how much separation I want there. So we'll go ahead and add that. And you see it, it's changing the preview. And is that, I mean, uh, when you look at some of the new digital printers where they have like fifth station color, like the, the Ricoh C7 South 1000 series, yeah. is that like, so you can output something that you can actually use for separation on the devices? Yeah, or? yeah. so this is, well, this is more for like a, what they call device end uh, output type. And so kind of getting to that kind of like hi-fi special colorization. Uh, oh, okay. it's gonna so be, it's to extend the color gamut, basically? It's going to be used in very specific cases when you want a color. For example, maybe your brand has a very specific color that you have 
Um, you might be using a, a mixed. I was I was more thinking that since you have the, the gradation of or the percentage of the of the spot, because I mean, if you look at some of the the printers now with the neon color, yeah, uh, I just think that uh, actually Rico they did a tool where you can actually in Photoshop you can preview yeah. replacement of colors. I thought that was uh, that was the purpose for it, uh, but, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but I get your point, yeah. 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 Um, so that's mixing colors. Those are two new color types. Yeah. And one of the other big things we added to Chili is our barcode engine has been replaced. So Chili actually makes barcodes. It's been doing that for quite a while. Yeah. Um, but what we did with our new barcode engine is we have actually increased the speed because before what you would do is when you make a barcode, it would make an image of that barcode and then load it into the Chili document, which actually takes a little bit of time, right? Especially if there's thousands of pages, yeah, imagine, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So imagine you had this connected to a data source and you're making, like you said, a thousand barcodes, right? So what we do now is we actually have a vector base. So with this barcode here, uh, we'll just click on it. Um, I can choose my barcode type. Now, I only have two right here, but Chili supports more than two. If I go over here and we take a look at barcode types, You'll so that is from the back end, you That's decide back what end. you want to Correct. offer yeah. your clients. Yeah, basically. exactly. Yeah. So this here is obviously the editor yeah. that you'll use to design the template. Yeah. And this here is going to be where you go do all the settings. Yeah. It's not it's not as fun for the end user, but it's important for the designers to be able to pick all their choices. But it's also important because, I mean, the application, if you, for example, with this incident here where you have like a brewery, label yep. I mean they would they would need to be able to use their barcodes that their, their exactly. retailers exactly. Re requires. and right? what they would do is they'd come in here and change their barcode settings and some of the barcodes we support um, the new ones here is GS1128 uh, ITF14 Latinus Pharma and PDF 417. So that is different standards of barcodes. Different standards. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. for example, PDF 417 is used um, when you get your boarding pass for your airplane. Oh, okay. That's the barcode that's oh, used okay, there. Okay. Okay. Yep. And what we can do is we can come back to our Chili document, and we'll go ahead and change the barcode right here. And we'll click Apply. And look how fast it updated. Oh, that's fast. No, no time. Yeah. And you can imagine this is just one document, but if yeah. you were doing variable data printing, yeah. it definitely increases the speed that it takes. Yeah. This is cool features, and I mean, what what surprises me about, um, I mean, I know of course you have prepared the demo. That is good. And I can see that you have different tabs open, but yep. what I like about it, it seems that it's not as complex as you could imagine. Because I mean, when you look, as I said to Fabian, when you look at how complex Chile actually is, you can always be a little bit worried about the, yeah. the, the how easy or how difficult that's, it is that's to use. That's the thing, it. right? Yeah. So um, we took a look at this guy here, and you see he has so much stuff. Yeah. What you do is you take this workspace and you customize it to the end user, so that when the end user goes in, like here. They're only doing specific things that are related to what they're trying to do. So the whole thing at Chili is customizing templates, customizing designs, and also customizing for the end user so that in the end you get a, a result that works for everybody. Works for designers, works for end users, all around the board. Mm. And uh, what, what is it you do in uh, your daily work at Chili? Oh yeah. So I am the guy who deals you are the with, guy that... with, with integrations, okay. with integrating Chili, with the API, with all yeah. that stuff. Um, if people have problems, it's usually yeah. me yeah. they come and talk to. Yeah. Um, but I also go to clients and say, yeah. hey, let's take a look at your integration. Let's see how we can improve upon it. Um, let's see how we can introduce Chili, put it inside your website, put it inside your you know, print solution. So basically everything from consulting to dealing with uh, issues that people might have. It must be fun. It is very fun. Yes. Have you been... Uh, Part of Chile for a long time, or? yeah. So, so uh, I'm actually relatively new, but it's about two years. Now. Okay, okay. Um, so, but it's, I feel like I've been here forever. Okay. And I really love the product because, again, the key concept is it's just totally customizable. Yeah, uh, it's funny because I think that you know, for some people, I think that uh, Chile was or is seen as more like a web to print solution on steroids. It's definitely not. But no, yeah. no, because it's way more than that, more right? Than that, yeah. yeah. It's and it's a. Uh, I, I was just about to say that you, sometimes you could even consider making a, an application that is not web-based just to, because it, yeah, the design exactly. tools look yep. so... Uh, and what's super exciting is uh, we're going more and more towards digital. So, for example, we have the ability to uh, use pixels as a measurement in the new version of Chile. So I can use pixels as a measurement, which is, again, going more and more to digital. Yeah, because and it's outputting to screen devices exactly, as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And what's going to be really cool is at our Spicy Talks event, which is like November 6th, November 7th in Berlin, we're going to announce some stuff that's going to be really, really excited for people who are in the digital That's so video. unfair. You know, you're sitting with a guy from the I'm press. I'm sorry, I'm and sorry. You, and, you, and you put that T-shirt in I my face. To, I had yeah, to, yeah, yeah. I had to. But yeah, there's going to be some crazy stuff. I wish I could tell you, but man, it's going to be, it's going to be, next year, Chile's going to be the number one when it comes to digital media yeah. creation. 
I believe you. Um, we're just about to round this thing up here yep. with the first demo. We have a second demo where you have a client Our coming client in. client shows yeah. integration. Yeah. What kind of client is coming in? So the client actually creates uh, yearbooks. Yep. Yeah. Yearbooks. Oh, he uses okay. Chili to create yearbooks. Okay. Um, so it's going to be really cool to see how he integrates Chili, not only with his own technology, um, and how his clients interact with it and how they use, because he does like, your books have a lot of pages. It's not just this four page thing, right? No, no, yeah. We're talking like- A lot of variables. A lot of pictures, a lot yeah. of variables. Yeah. So it's going to be very interesting to see his whole setup. That's cool. Well, yeah, it was nice talking, yeah. Yeah, it was so great. So